Here go. Oh, I fucking around and turn the volume down and pause it. I'm like, well, I don't know. I be condemning myself. I be talking to Tina Baker, she said she stopped singing for a year after he took her song when he, according to her, raped her. I'll park right there parenthetically. Have you had your body violated? Has someone stepped to you incorrectly and unjustly? And now you bear the scars, the secret scars. No, you suffer in silence from what was done to you that took away away from you, the you that makes you you. You have processed and philosophized and as a consequence, here you are like Tina Baker. Your dreams are in the wind and you know something about being internally broken. You know something about being discouraged and depressed. What do you do to anesthetize the pain? Well, I think that's what's going on in the context of our text for Dr. James Earl May Massey talks about the fact that the people who were addressed by the Hebrew Herald who writes the book of Hebrews, they find themselves catching hail from the Emperor Nero because Nero is using his position and power to oppress. He is using the bully pulpit of his position in Rome to oppress because evidently they had this NFL that played there in a Rome, and as a consequence, Nero said, you're going to stand for the national anthem. You're going to respect the national anthem. Well, y'all know I'm playing loose with this right now, but you know we got Donald J. Nero in the emperor's house there in Washington, D.C. And it did not blow your mind this week that the NFL kowtowed to the whims of this bully in the presidential office and hear them now get up and say that they are going to play plantation politics and if you are going to play in the NFL plantation you have one responsibility and that is to demonstrate your patriotism by standing in respect of the anthem and the flag ain't that a trip in a real sense they are defining patriotism by how you respond to the flag by how you respond to the national anthem they don't define it by the principles, but they define it instead by you standing up. Ain't that empty and shallow, just like the person in the White House? Because if your patriotism is only determined by your standing and saluting a flag during a song, if that lets you get away with a whole lot of stuff that's unpatriotic, which is what goes on in the White House day in and day out, isn't that a trip? I guess y'all are not getting it. I'll push it a little bit further. Does it not blow your mind that poetically and providentially, the same day the NFL made that plantation policy that a video was released of Sterling Brown in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that was so evil that the police and the mayor had to apologize before it was released. And you ain't heard 46 minus 1 say a word about that, but he does have a word of a pardon for Jack Johnson, who was victimized by the criminal justice system. Oh, I see. It's easier to get with justice for someone who's been dead for a hundred years as opposed to fighting for justice for black bodies that are alive right now. Because you've spent so much time lying about what the what, what Colin Kaepernick was protesting. Kaepernick was disrespecting the flag. He was protesting the fact that this nation does not live up to the true meaning of what the flag represents, and that's liberty and justice for all. Save your party. Save your party. You didn't give a pardon to the Central Park Five. The Central Park Five, Google them since y'all evidently don't know them. The Central Park Five, five young black brothers who were sentenced to prison for a rape that they, they did not commit. And Donald J. Trump, 46 minus one, had the audacity to take out a full page ad in the New York Times and call for the death penalty for them. And he never has apologized. And even when they by DNA evidence and someone else admitted what they had done, he still did not come back and apologize because a dead black person 
something is easier to give justice to than live black bodies that's hypocritical and unpatriotic. Oh, say, can you say? <laughs> So check this out. Check this out. The, the Hebrew writer knows they're catching hell. They're being persecuted. And the Hebrew writer says, since y'all catching all this hell, I got a word for you. Me. Since you're catching all this hell and you feel broken on the inside, that's what I want to talk to you right now because we do a real yeah, good job mm -hmm. as black church, church folks mm -hmm. of faking it until we make it. We do a real good job of coming to church and sometimes using religion as anesthesia to keep us from dealing with the real issues. Let me tell you something. You can't heal from what you ain't real about and willing to deal with. You better preach for the faith and whatever else Jesus taught us and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So if the truth sets you free, living in denial is a lie and a lie keeps you locked up and you can't get free until the spirit of truth searches with its spotlight what's really going on with you. And today you came to church and the Holy Ghost is perusing the pews and the Holy Ghost is saying the doctor is in to deal with your internal brokenness. The doctor is here and we've got to get it together before we all fall apart. Okay. Okay, okay, so check this out, check this out. Out in Chicago this week, wonderful weather, diametrically opposite to the last time I was there. Last time I, I was there, the wind was hellacious and the wind blew viciously. I'm walking Michigan Avenue trying to get to a restaurant and the wind blew so much it blew the cap off of a young brother from one end of the block to the other end. It's a young cat. I'm sure he's about nine, ten years old. So what do I do? Once the cap stopped in the wind, I put my foot on the cap and then I put up the cap and under the cap was a ten dollar bill. And so when he finally got to me, I gave him the cap and I gave him the ten dollar bill. He said, what are you giving me this for, sir? I said, because your cap landed on the ten dollar bill. And he said, what? I said, yeah, that's where it landed and nobody else picked it up. And so I figured since it's your cap and the cap landed on the ten dollar bill, you get the ten dollar bill and you get the cap back. Check out what the brother said. I won't forget it. He said, wow, only God to let, could let me lose a cap and find a blessing. And every now and then, when you feel like you're in the wind, when you feel like you're broken on the inside, God says, I'll make sure that the wind blows where it needs to blow. And before you know it, I'll let you profit from what you lost. Before you know it, I'll let you gain from what you thought was a loss. Before you know it, I will add to what life has subtracted. I'm going to do that one more time because God is so good. God is the only one I know who can add by subtracting. Now shout you right quick because some of y'all are in church shout today right and you just. And that's something. I want to discuss too, and not so much discuss, but none of time discussing it. And that hit today, so that's what's up. I'm glad I chimed in, you know, because I was kind of feeling like, damn, I don't feel like doing this right now, you know. Had a few flashbacks to some subtraction that came in your life. God subtracted her. Thank you. God subtracted him. Bless your name. God subtracted that job. God, you did that. God subtracted, subtracted, subtracted. But God used that subtraction in order to add what you wouldn't have received had you not experienced that subtraction. Is there a shout in the house? Thank you for subtraction. Thank you for minuses. Thank you for using my assist to get me to a plus. Even just the fact, you know, not necessarily losing her so much, like, in totality, but, you know, like, her, like, you know, breaking up with me, like, you know, every time, but even just this last time, I mean, I wouldn't even, probably wouldn't even be up on this, you know, like, if she just put up with everything, and just, you know, that I've done, but, you know, I kind of, you know, started doing the whole church thing in the first place, you know, like, um, I wouldn't say it would press her, but, you know, there's something I could do, you know, to like the pressure I went hard over because you know, some stuff, you know, I'm like, I'm not really like so into doing. So, <clears throat> like, you know, stuff that I am kind of 
into doing I want to, you know, do the best at what I, you know, it's like, what I can do. It's kind of like, um, I learned about, like, you know, like, um, I forget what it was for, but it might, it would have something to do with sex, you know, but it was just like, it gave me like a lot of kind of um, tips and stuff. And I was like, you know, what's the stuff I can implement, you know, that'll, you know, won't even be like that big of a difference in my life, but a, a major difference at the same time, you know?